It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These are the final seconds. The lead in the fourth. Can they hold on to it? That do or die time. And everything rides on one shot. But it isn't going to be that easy. And it's a one point game. This is down to the wire. One shot to take you to the top. One win. This is clutch basketball. That's the NBA playoffs. That's game. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans who are listening to Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. To get this show every day, follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also tell your smart device to play Podcast Locked On Mets. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. All right, so this is opening day. 2.0. Finally, it appears like we're going to get to Mets baseball after the Washington Nationals and a COVID outbreak ruined the first weekend for the Mets. This should finally be the night that Jacob DeGrom takes the mound and the Mets kick off the 2021 season. A lot of excitement in the air for this team. I know it might feel a little bit different now because opening day might not have that same buzz as everyone else has played three games, but you know what? Mets fans, stay excited. This is going to be an awesome season, and tonight should be a lot of fun. But on today's show, I want to talk a lot about the Mets' ace, Jacob deGrom. Over the weekend, Andy Martino had a report that the Mets had some preliminary discussions about a contract extension. Nothing really happened there, but I want to talk about that story in the first segment. And in the second segment, I want to talk about what an extension for deGrom would look like and, you know, what this latter stage of his career could be with the Mets because it appears like DeGrom keeps getting better with age and uh, there's no signs of slowing down. Finally, in the third segment, I will preview this upcoming series with the Philadelphia Phillies. Before we get to any of that, though, I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at FinkelsteinRyan. You can also find some of my writing about the Mets at MetsmerizeOnline.com. So let's start off right there with Jacob DeGrom and a potential contract extension with the Mets. Andy Martino was the one who reported this for SNY, that the Mets had some preliminary discussions that didn't really go anywhere, but it does kind of put out there that the Mets are thinking about DeGrom long-term and the fact that his contract has an opt-out after the 2022 season. And that deal was really interesting the more you look at it, because DeGrom certainly can and probably should exercise that opt-out after 2022 when you look at what the market could be for his services you know Garrett Cole gets 36 million a year over that long-term deal DeGrom only signed a five-year extension at the time it was you know a good deal for him because he got his money a little bit early before he would have been a free agent but at the same time what you look at it now he is underpaid and so he is going to want to opt out and maximize his value, but he also wants to stay with the Mets. So it's good that these sides have kind of started to talk, but I think both of them probably realized that, you know, this wasn't necessarily the time to talk extension. Maybe it makes a little more sense next year when he is basically on a contract year with that opt out following the 2022 season. And that's where something could get done. And one of the other comments over the weekend came from Michael Conforto when he was asked about extensions and what this team would look like. And he said something along the lines of this team could look a lot different very soon because, you know, he's going to be a free agent and Syndergaard can be a free agent and Marcus Stroman can be a free agent. There's a lot of guys that could potentially be on the move. And you look at Jacob DeGrom and I feel like he is the one player out of all of them the Mets cannot afford to lose. And so basically there's, 
you know, no need for any more hometown discounts at this point. DeGrom is going to get paid. He's going to get paid handsomely. And the Mets are just going to have to pony up and pay him. But this is kind of a very interesting backdrop to, you know, this particular superstar for the Mets who is a future Hall of Famer if he stays on this track. It's just something you have to think about. What's he going to get paid? And how does that relate to all these other free agents? I mean, if you know that DeGrom is getting very close to $40 million a year, how does that impact what you can spend on Michael Conforto? If you look at your team, and let's just say at the end of this year, Khalil Lee has established himself from a prospect to a player that can be effective for the Mets as a starter. And this is a lot of if ands, and buts on that because, you know, he is still nowhere near that level of a player. But I'm just kind of throwing a hypothetical out there. And maybe you know that you can get Brandon Nemo to sign a contract extension that's in the range of, you know, between 15 and 18 as opposed to a Conforto who might command 25 to 28 a year. These are the decisions that are going to have to be made. And DeGrom certainly factors in to all of them. You know, are you going to be able to pay a Noah Syndergaard or a Marcus Stroman upwards of $20 million a year if you know that DeGrom's going to come up? So I just wanted to kind of talk about all of the layers to this. Not that it impacts this season. and I don't want to damper opening day. But I do want to talk about the player that Jacob DeGrom is and what it means to get him to stay with the Mets for the rest of his career because I really do believe this is the once-in-a-generation talent you stumble upon that will have his jersey retired, that can spend his entire career with the Mets, and hopefully can get an incredible beginning, middle, and end to his story as a Met. Because if you look at Mets history, you know you have great players like Keith Hernandez and Mike Piazza and Gary Carter and a lot of these guys that came in and were acquired in the middle of their careers and had you know really nice runs with the Mets but did not have that beginning with the Mets. You then have a player like Jose Reyes, who had a nice start, left the team, had a bunch of stuff going off the field, and that kind of tarnished any like long-lasting legacy you could really think of for that player. You look at David Wright, great beginning, great middle. The end of his career gets ruined by injuries. So, And even Tom Seaver, who was the closest to having that complete career, the Mets traded him. So this is their chance to get it right, start to finish. The Derek Jeter-esque career. You know, the guy who comes up, you know, wins a rookie of the year, hopefully eventually wins a World Series with the Mets, can continue to be at the top of the sport as a Cy Young, you know, perennial candidate to win those types of awards, and eventually, hopefully, can gracefully exit with the Mets and, you know, finish off a great career. So I think it's just a very interesting thing to talk about. And I'll leave with this quote before we talk about kind of the figures that DeGrom could command. And this was when he was asked about remaining with the Mets for his entire career this spring. DeGrom said, quote, the goal is to go out there, perform, and then when that time comes, make that decision. But one thing I do think is really, really, really cool is whenever somebody spends their entire career with one team. You don't see it happen a whole lot anymore. So it's definitely something that I've thought about. And we just have to see when that time comes. With that said right there, the ball is in the Mets court to make sure that you know he doesn't have to make that decision because the Mets pay him what he's deserved when that time comes. I want to talk about what that figure could be and what DeGrom will look like over the length of that contract in just a minute. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Football's been over, but we still have the NBA and the NHL and now Major League Baseball in full swing, Bet Online even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. With real time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine, Bet Online has you covered for all the news scores and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code LOCKED ON. Again, that's promo code LOCKED ON to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Yeah, you're making sports bets, but are you making winning sports bets? To win consistently, you need an edge. Research, analytics. 
It's a lot. Or you could let BetQL do the work for you. Every game, every potential bet, from winners and losers to all the sides and totals, line movement, player props, and more. All backed by BetQL's proven data and analytics. BetQL analyzes over 350,000 unique bets every year and rates each potential bet on a scale of one to five stars. A five star is definitely a smart bet. One star, smart money is staying away. BetQL even lets you sort all of today's games with the best options listed right there at the top of your screen. BetQL gives you access to the same information the pros use. The stuff the sports books don't want you to see. It's time to bet smarter and beat the books with BetQL. Visit BetQL.com today and use promo code PODCAST for 20% off. That's 20% off with promo code PODCAST at BetQL.com. Get more of the sports news you need in less time with our new Locked On Today podcast. Hosted by Peter Bukowski, Locked On Today is a daily podcast breaking down the biggest stories with analysis from our local experts. Start your day with all the sports news you need in under 20 minutes by subscribing to Locked On Today wherever you get your podcasts. So let's talk about a potential contract for Jacob DeGrom. Let's just say this season wraps up. The Mets make the playoffs, who knows how far they get, and it's time to talk with DeGrom about what would get him to sign an extension to remain with the Mets for the rest of his career. Right now, I would say five years, $200 million. Let's just start there because DeGrom deserves to be the highest paid pitcher on an average annual basis. Cole got 36. I don't think it's crazy to give DeGrom 40 million a year. In a five-year deal, that would essentially pay him, if it kicked in in 2023, that would pay him from his age 35 through his age 39 season. And he would also have wrapped into that, that final year of his deal, which was worth or is worth in 2022, $36 million. Now, if you look at what he's been paid, you know this year, DeGrom is getting $33.5 million with the $2.5 million signing bonus wrapped into that. That gets you to that $36 million. 22, it is the same thing. Now, he has that opt-out after the 2022 season where he can opt into his deal and get $30.5 million, which again would be well below his market value, with a club option the following year that would then get tied in where the Mets could pick it up for $32.5 million with $15 million in deferred money. And across the first four years of this deal, there was $52.5 million million dollars in deferred money because the will ponds are very very cheap so with that being said if you look at jacob Degrom, look at his contract and you say you know the five-year 200 million dollar deal you could wipe out the deferred money from 2022 if you wanted to so that 15 million dollars of deferred money from his 36 that he'll get in 2022 you could just give it all to him up front and basically, you know, essentially make it a six-year, $236 million contract. Now, it sounds like a lot of money, but Jacob DeGrom is worth it. And you look at DeGrom's career, and you compare it to the best the franchise has ever seen, which is the franchise, Tom Seaver. Seaver's career ERA at the Mets was 257. DeGrom's 261. His ERA plus, which measures pitchers on a league average of 100, Seaver's was 136. DeGrom's is 150. You go to strikeouts, and this was obviously a different time when Seaver was pitching where they kind of emphasized pitching to contact and going deep into games. But Seaver, for his career, his strikeout per nine rate was 7.5. His walk per nine was 2.5. DeGrom's career, it's a 10.5 strikeout per nine, which is ridiculous. Uh, his walk per nine is 2.2. Bottom line, Jacob DeGrom is pitching at a Tom Seaver level. And my argument would be you cannot let Tom Seaver walk twice. This is a different circumstance. This wouldn't be a trade situation, but you got to keep this guy. You got to pay him what he's worth. And to me, if you get him to sign a five-year, $200 million extension, while it sounds really large, it is a contract he absolutely deserves. Now let's talk about could DeGrom live up to that contract. He turns 33 years old in June. He was throwing 102 miles per hour in spring. I think that arm has a lot of life to it. Now, what we're talking about here is if this extension kicks in you know, after the 2022 season, again, you're talking about age 35 through age 39. Those are the seasons that would be under that five-year contract. 
But I look at DeGrom, who has won two Cy Youngs and, you know, probably could have and maybe should have won a third if last year was a full season. Because I think, you know, over a larger sample size, I believe he would have outperformed Trevor Bauer. Regardless, you look at that level of a pitcher right now, can he keep it going, right? Justin Verlander in 2019 won the AL Cy Young, pitching to a 2.58 ERA, had 300 strikeouts and 223 innings pitched. And he was 36 years old that season. Right now, he nearly has 3,000 career innings to his resume. He just had Tommy John in 2020. Obviously not the best example, but you look at you know Jacob deGrom's career innings. He's at 1,169 two-thirds going into this season. So a hell of a lot more mileage on Verlander's arm than deGrom. So can deGrom have... You know, seven more good seasons. I really think he can, or at least have, you know, five or six, which will make that contract worth it. You look at Max Scherzer. He is another pitcher that is starting to break down a bit, but he was still effective last year at 36. Not elite, but effective and again, small sample size. He has 2,357 and a third innings pitch at this stage in his career. So for Jacob DeGrom to get to the point where Scherzer's breaking down, you are talking about, I mean, what? If he goes 200 innings a season, another six years before he gets to that point? What I'm trying to illustrate here is that DeGrom has a lot of mileage to go in that arm. He's not as taxed as some of these other pitchers because, quite honestly, he didn't start pitching until college. That affects it as well. And... You know, he had Tommy John right away once he got, you know, signed by the Mets after the draft. He just doesn't have the same mileage, and I think that he can hold up a lot longer. And, you know, I did a locker room with Josh Neighbors, the host of Locked On Nationals, on Thursday when we thought it was going to be opening day. And we were talking about Scherzer and DeGrom. And one of the things that we noted is that DeGrom has this free flowing, easy motion with the perfect mechanics, whereas Scherzer is a grunter. You know, he's out there. He's really violent with the way he throws. Verlander was the same way earlier on in his career. And eventually, after having a setback, Verlander, you know, honed in on his mechanics and was able to find a fountain of youth. So I look at DeGrom. I look at his mechanics. I look at what we've seen over the last couple of years where somehow he keeps getting better. And I believe he'd perform for whatever contract the Mets sign him to. So I just wanted to kind of talk about this before we you know, table all of it and we focus on the 2021 Mets because this is a legacy play. This is a potential future Hall of Famer. This is someone who could have a statue outside of City Field right along the side of the franchise. You know, how cool would it be if one day the franchise and the DeGrominator were playing catch outside of City Field and broiled in in bronze for eternity. That's the type of awesome stuff we're talking about here. And I just think Jacob deGrom would be worth every penny. And these are the conversations I think that are starting to happen behind the scenes here because these are things the Mets have to start thinking about because you're getting to a point where he is closer to free agency than I think a lot of Mets fans think. But we're going to, again, table all this now. Okay, this was... A preseason conversation, and this season's here. It's opening day for the Mets. We're going to preview this series between the Philadelphia Phillies in just a minute. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market. They just had their Built Bar Madness tournament, and I regret to inform you that the Coconut Brownie Chunk Bar won. Now, this is a great tasting protein bar. I haven't tried a Built Bar I don't like, but... I'm partial to the mint brownie. I'm partial to the cookies and cream. And it was tough to see both of them fall out in the final four. But regardless, any built bar you try is going to have a couple things. They're going to come low in calorie, low in sugar, high in protein, and high in fiber. They're soft and easy to chew. And they all come covered in 100% chocolate. So if you want to try built bar today, go to builtbar.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. This episode is brought to you by HP Instant Ink. 
No one is reading your mind, but HP Instant Ink knows when your printer is running low and sends you new cartridges, so you never have to think about ink. Save up to 50%. You'll pay less than $5 a month for ink and never run out again. Find out if your printer is eligible and enroll today at hpinstantink.com. Conditions apply. For details, visit hp.com slash Spotify. So for the New York Mets, today is opening day. And again, it is unfortunate that this season had so much hype got postponed for a couple of days. And some of that just overall holiday-esque, you know, opening day vibe that you get where the planes are flying over and you get the lineups announced. I mean, that's kind of gone for the Mets. Unfortunately, you probably have to wait until the home opener to get that energy back because the Phillies just played a series against the Braves in Philadelphia. So I don't think that they're going to pander to the Mets fans watching on TV to make it seem like opening day. Maybe they do. I just don't think that's going to happen. So overall, this is going to feel like game four, five, and six of the season because for the Phillies, it is game four, five, and six. And for the Mets, you know, it's just kind of a weird start to the year, but overall, we get baseball back. We get regular season games that count. Jacob DeGrom is going to be on the mound, and this should be a really exciting game to watch. And I think the biggest win out of all of this is had the Mets played an opening day on Thursday against the Nationals, it would have been a nationally televised game, which means you wouldn't have gotten Gary Keith and Ron for the opener in 2021. That alone maybe makes that weight worth it. Another good thing is DeGrom's going to face off against Matt Moore, the number four starter for the Phillies. And as I talked about in my season preview, outside of the top three for the Phillies, that rotation drops off a cliff. So games one and two, you got the Mets' best two starters, DeGrom and Stroman, going against Matt Moore and Chase Anderson. So they have a significant advantage to start off their season against the Phillies. But the Phillies are a little bit hot. They just swept the Braves to start their season. With some great pitching, I might add, from those you know, top three starters. Aaron Nola you know, goes 6-2 and two third on opening day. Uh, made one mistake, gave up a two-run homer to Pablo Sandoval. Which again, cannot believe Sandoval is still playing Major League Baseball. But hey, or even for the, for the Braves for that matter, makes that even more surprising. But regardless... Nola will start game three of this series. That's the one pitcher you have to worry about. We will not see Zach Wheeler in this series because Wheeler pitched seven innings of one hit ball on Saturday, struck out 10 Braves in a four to nothing win. Man, that one hurts, doesn't it? I mean, you know, long time locked on Mets listeners know the 2019 season was basically, you know, a, a year long plea for the Mets to sign Zach Wheeler to a contract extension. That was all I was talking about. At the time, I kept on floating this idea of trading Noah Syndergaard for prospects because I thought his arm would break down and the Mets should sign Zach Wheeler to an extension because I thought the injuries were behind him and the next couple of years were going to be nothing but the best. Yes, I will be completely honest here. I am trying to pat myself on the back for being right about that take, but overall, a huge blunder from the last regime to let Wheeler walk, but that was basically because they were, you know, broke. So, unfortunately, the sale didn't come, you know, two years earlier, and maybe we'd still have Zach Wheeler. But for this specific series, that does not matter. Wheeler will not pitch. You have favorable matchups in the first two games, and then you have David Peterson having to kind of punch above his weight class there going up against Aaron Nolan in Game 3. But I think the Mets, hopefully... We'll have this series won by the time we get to game three. One of the interesting aspects of Matt Moore starting is instead of facing Scherzer for your quote unquote opening day lineup, you're facing a lefty. So the Mets might adjust with their lineup. You know, usually for opening day, this is kind of a time where you would maybe, you know, give some ceremonial nods in your starting lineup, even if you're facing a lefty. 
you know, established veteran like Brandon Nemo maybe gets that start because it's opening day. Now, I don't know what Luis Rojas is going to do. One thing I do know, J.D. Davis will definitely be in the starting lineup at third base, whereas against Scherzer, Guillaume might have gotten a nod. Who knows? Other than that, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty obvious that Pete Alonso, Jeff McNeil, Francisco Lindor, I mean, those are going to be your other starting infielders. McCann, obviously, behind the plate. Conforto, obviously, in right. It will be interesting to see what the Mets do in center and left. Do they go really heavy into the lefty-lefty matchup stuff and start Almora and Pilar? I sort of doubt that they would start both, but will one of them get the start? Maybe in place of Dominic Smith? I could see that happening. I could see the Mets going with a little more defense, a right-handed bat, Maybe Pilar starts in the center, Nemo's in left. That could be the way the Mets go, or they could kind of lean back into, you know, the opening day aesthetic and go with their guys, which would mean Dominic Smith still gets the start against the lefty. Offensively, I still like that lineup. I think Dom hits against lefties. I think Nemo should hit against lefties. I don't mind Conforto. These are guys that I believe have established themselves to a point where they don't have to go lefty, righty, heavy uh, until you get into a season where it just makes sense to give one of those guys a breather, and you're not there yet. So I would start all of them, but if Luis Rojas wants to put Pilar in the starting lineup against the lefty, I'm not going to fault him. It would improve the outfield defense. The one thing I am looking for is to see if this Phillies bullpen holds up. So far this year, they have. They won two one-run games. Other than Zach Wheeler's start, it was very close games against the Braves. So can they keep that going when they were the worst bullpen in baseball last year? That's definitely something to watch. When it comes to the Mets bullpen, I'm going to be very curious when we get to that first game where a starter leaves after six innings and the Mets have, say, a two-run lead. Who are the arms that Luis Rojas trusts the most? You know, once you get into the regular season, there's no hiding. And right now, if I had to guess, I think the three arms they trust the most probably are Elvin Diaz, Trevor May, and Miguel Castro. We'll just have to wait to see how that all kind of comes together. How are they going to deploy Familia and Betances? That is a storyline that we're going to follow early on. How long of a leash do those guys have? What does Jacob Barnes look like? The bullpen is one of those things that really kind of comes into focus once you get to the regular season. And so that's definitely a unit to watch. Overall, it's Mets baseball. Get excited for tonight. It's going to be an awesome game. It's going to be great to see Jacob DeGrom on the mound. It's going to be great to see Francisco Lindor, you know, batting second, right in the heart of everything at shortstop. Uh, I can't wait. I know you guys can't wait either. Make sure you tune into Locked on Mets tomorrow for a breakdown of everything that we watched unfold later tonight. Anyway, as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at FinkelsteinRyan. Follow the show, at LockedOnMet. And if you're starting your fantasy baseball season and you're looking for an edge, you now have a new resource to give you that because the Locked On Fantasy Baseball podcast is what fantasy baseball addicts Crave. It is a daily fantasy baseball podcast hosted by veteran fantasy analyst Scott Cullen, who uses data and nearly two decades of experience to offer the strategies and waiver wire pickups that lead to league wins. So follow Locked On Fantasy Baseball on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts.